In this video, we aim to level up our ability to create rig mechanisms even further. And the next mechanism we'll work on is a hips control. Currently, we have a spine that consists of these three bones going in the same direction. And that's okay, but it is a bit simplistic. One thing that this rig cannot do is isolated hip movement, which is very common and very easy for humans to do. So we need to address this. For now, I want to give you the simplest solution that is easy to implement, but also quite useful and powerful. So this is our hip bone, and currently it rotates here from the bottom of the pelvis. We kind of want it to rotate from here. And that is easy to do. If I just had the thick part of the bone here instead of here, that would give me the basic behavior. And in edit mode, if I select this bone and press Alt F, that is exactly what I get. Alt F flips the bone. If you go to the armature menu in edit mode, you should find it under switch direction. Flipping the bone like this may change the hierarchy or the parenting. So let's see what we get. Now, this bone is completely disconnected, but the good news is we got the pivot point that we wanted. So in edit mode, let's parent the legs back to this bone. And now we have the basic hips rotation and the rest of the spine can rotate on its own. But occasionally we may want to move or rotate the entire spine. So we would have to select these two bones and move them together. That's not ideal. And in the spirit of giving you the simplest possible solution, I'll go to edit mode, select one of these points, press E then Y to extrude the new bone. I'll rename it to torso and parent the hips bone and the first spine bone to the new torso bone. Now I have this torso bone, which can move and rotate the whole spine, but I also have my separate hips bone and my individual spine bones. This torso bone doesn't need to be exactly here. It kind of becomes the center of gravity of the character. So you can move it up or down and it will depend on your individual character. I'm going to place it around here in the hips area. And that is it for the spine. It wasn't too bad, right? So we are on a roll. So we'll be working on the foot roll mechanism. Pun was not intended. Currently, we only have this control for the foot. That is the IK control. It moves the whole leg. It rotates the foot. It is very useful. But occasionally we may want to rotate the foot from the tip of the toes or lift the foot without lifting the toes. There are a million ways to create a foot rig, but I'm going to show you a solution that is relatively easy to make. It's logical and it gives you plenty of control. And most importantly, it will teach you important rigging concepts. If I have this bone selected and shift and right click to place the three cursor here at the end of the foot and then switch my pivot point to 3D cursor, you'll see that we kind of get this rotation from the end of the foot. And if I place it here at the toes, we can raise the foot from the toes. But just using the 3D cursor is not ideal. Again, it creates a mess with the animation curves. So let's try to find a better solution. What we need is to give the IK target additional pivot points somehow. Try this, go to edit mode, create a new bone and place it somewhere near the foot. Parent the IK target to that bone. Go to pose mode. Let's switch our pivot to something like individual origins so that we actually rotate this bone on its pivot point, which again is the thick part of the bone. So this pivot point became a new pivot point for the IK. If I go to edit mode, move it a little bit towards the toes and go to pose mode, it will rotate from the toes or from the heels. What I want for this foot setup is to be able to rotate the foot from the ball of the foot, the tip of the toes, and from the heel. 
So I could create three bones exactly at these points and use them as pivot points. In edit mode, I'm going to delete this bone, select this point, which is exactly the ball of the foot, switch orientation to global, press E then Z to extrude a bone straight up, and it is parented and connected. I'm going to press Alt P and clear the parent. And let's create one more at the tip of the toe. E, Z, select the bone, Alt P, clear parent. And from the side view, duplicate this bone and place it at the heel. So these are our pivot bones. Let's name them. This one will be heel pivot.l ball pivot.l and toe pivot.l okay so now i want these bones to be my pivot points so i need to parent the ik targets to them but a bone can have only one parent i can parent the ik target either to this bone or to this bone or to this bone but not to all of them but we can create a chain of parents or nested parenting it should be fairly intuitive to understand, but just in case, let me try to explain it in more detail. In Blender, parenting is not on a single level. I can parent this bone to this bone, and then parent this bone to the third bone. Now the first bone is parented to the second bone, and the second bone is parented to the third bone, and the parenting propagates up which means that this bone is parent of all of the bones. And technically this bone is its child and this one is its grandchild. I don't really use these terms, but if it helps you, that's cool. Another way to visualize this is to go to your outliner, expand the armature details, expand pose, and then you'll see your bones in a hierarchy. And if I select this top bone, it is our topmost parent. And then our second parent, and then we have the final bone that is just a child of the other ones. So parenting can be nested and we are using this to our advantage. Back to our rig. Okay, so we could chain the parents like this. The IK target will be parented to the ball pivot. The ball pivot will be parented to the toe pivot and the toe pivot will be parented to the heel pivot. So the hierarchy will be the heel at the top, the toe second, the ball third and the IK target at the bottom so that it is controlled by all of the pivots. So I'll parent the IK target to the ball pivot, the ball pivot to the toe pivot, and toe pivot to heel pivot. Let's go to pose mode and test it. If I rotate this bone, it pivots from the heel, this one from the toes, and this one from the ball of the foot. And this is nice, but what happens when I move the original IK target? It still works, but our pivot bones do not move with it. That means the pivots will not work as intended. I'll reset the pose. So what can we do about this? Well, we could add one more pivot bone exactly where the IK target is and make this new pivot the top of the foot hierarchy so that all other pivots and the IK target will move with it. Let's go to edit mode, and the easiest way to create a bone exactly where the IK target is, is to make a copy of the IK target. With individual origins, I'm going to scale this bone up a little bit, and the original IK target down a little bit. The size of these control bones does not really matter. All that matters is their pivot point, we only change the size so that we can distinguish between the two bones. If they're the same size, you cannot even tell that there are two bones there. Now, I want this new bone to become the top of this hierarchy. In pose mode, we can see that the current top of the hierarchy is the heel bone. So, if I parented this heel bone to the new bone, then the new bone should become the top of the hierarchy. Would you agree? Let's try it. Control P, keep offset. Now let's go to pose mode and see what happens. If I move this bone, I expect it to move the whole foot with it. Um, but that is not what happens. This confused me a lot while recording the tutorial, and I even had to start over a couple of times to make sense of it. 
And if you experience such an issue as a beginner, I think it might confuse you quite a bit. That's why I am including it here. First, let's see what actually happened. I duplicated this bone from the IK target bone, so it kept the parenting. It was parented to the ball, which itself is parented to the toe. And the toe is parented to the heel. So when I parented the heel to the new bone, instead of moving the new bone to the top of the hierarchy, the heel moved to the bottom of the hierarchy. I guess that makes sense too. Even if you didn't understand this whole thing perfectly, here are some key takeaways. One, sometimes Blender will not do exactly what you expect it to do. And two, getting confused is normal. It also happens to advanced users. So this is normal, it's part of rigging. What you do is you take a deep breath and start looking for the problem. Obviously something happened to the parenting, so let's just do the parenting again from the start and see what happens. I'll parent the original IK bone to the toe. And by the way, when bones are overlapping, you may have to click a couple of times to get the right bone. Or you can Alt and click, and that will give you a list of all bones under your cursor. So I want to parent this to the ball. Control P, keep offset is grayed out, so that means it's already parented. So this bone is good. Now let's parent the ball to the toe. Control P, and again it's grayed out. And then the toe to the heel, Control P. Okay, here we can reparent things. And now I'm going to parent the heel to the new bone. It is grayed out, so it's already parented. Okay, not working again. So let's go to edit mode, select all of these bones, press Alt P and clear the parent. And now do the parenting one by one. Ball to toe, toe to heel, and heel to the new IK bone. We Finally it works. So we have this new pivot from the ankle, so that gives us the regular IK behavior. Then we have a pivot from the ball of the foot, from the toes, and from the heel. Perfect. Well, almost perfect. When I pivot from the ball, I expect the toe to stay straight. So what can we do about this? Clear the pose. Any ideas how we could accomplish this using some of our base constraints? There are different ways to do it, but I found that I can do this with just one constraint. If I select the toe pivot, shift select the toe itself, and control shift C and give it a dumped track constraint. This makes the toe always point at the toe pivot. And so when I rotate the ball pivot, the toe will stay straight. Now, one thing we lost here is the ability to rotate the toe freely, which is not great, but this is easy to fix and it is a very important rigging technique. We could call this the constraint plus child technique. When you have a bone that is constrained and you want to keep this automation from the constraint, but you also want to enable the bone to move freely, you just create a copy of this bone and parent it to the constrained bone. So we get the automation from the constraint, and on top of that, you can move your parented bone any way you like. Let's do it. I'll go to edit mode, select the toe, press shift D and duplicate it. And so this copy will stay automated or constrained, and the original toe bone will be free. Automated bones that we don't manually animate are often given the prefix MCH, which stands for mechanism. Let's press F2 and name this bone MCH dash toe L and delete the 001. Now let's alt click and select the original toe and make it a little bit smaller again to distinguish it and parent it to the MCH toe. In pose mode, the original toe still has the constraint, so we're still unable to rotate it, but if I remove dump track, I can move it freely. And because it is parented to the constraint bone, it will move with it, so we still have our automation. Okay, this foot setup is basically finished. We just need to name some bones. For example, this new IK target, I'm going to press F2 and name anklepivot.l. I think this name makes the most sense 
and it should help you understand that this whole food setup is just the IK target parented in sequence to a bunch of pivot bones. The original IK target itself can still be moved, but it shouldn't be because it produces these kind of weird results. So this IK target has also become an MCH bone because it is necessary for the rig to work, but it should not be animated manually. So let's name it MCH dash leg IK target dot L. And something else we can do to MCH bones is to select them, press M, create a new collection, call it MCH. Then I'll select the MCH toe and also press M and move it to the new MCH collection. If I go to the armature tab, I can hide these MCH bones. So it would be less likely for the animator to animate them by mistake. Now I'm going to unhide them because I still want to symmetrize this setup. Let's go to edit mode. And now if I deselect everything first and then select all of these bones that I worked on, right click and symmetrize, that should symmetrize the setup perfectly. Let's test it. And it did not. That is most likely because we changed some of the names of the bones. So here is what I recommend. Go to edit mode, click away so that you deselect everything and then carefully select all of the bones on the right leg. Make sure X symmetry is off, delete the whole right leg, select the whole left leg, right click and symmetrize. Now it looks good. Now I could hide the MCH bones. Well, you just completed the most difficult part of the novice section. If something is still a bit fuzzy, do not rush forward. I would recommend going back and trying to understand it. Feel free to ask questions as well. Whenever you're ready, let's move on. In the next video, we'll go deeper into bone shapes and our rig will look really professional. Then you'll learn even more about weight painting in a dedicated weight painting video, we'll go over some important rigging concepts, and you'll be ready for the final novice challenge, face rigging.